what is up mystery gang welcome back to another episode of paranormal chat and today this is the second time we filmed this because the first time was atrocious it was, it was awful i'm so sorry <laughs> we were getting interrupted left and right but that's okay because we're gonna do it again and this time it's gonna be even better and this is tara Hello. <laughs> and she was like when I first started my Instagram like last year when it started getting big and I started getting like more subscribers she was one of the first ones that um I ended up following her page and then we ended up talking and she has taught me so much about like spirit guides astrology the Akashic records literally anything that I need to know like she's got and it's amazing and so welcome thank you it's nice to be here i remember you um you were looking for somebody to tell you about crystals mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I was like oh yeah crystals are fun <laughs> and i, I was like, started it i was like i don't know which one to get i don't know what to do or like what's good and what's bad and then i ended up getting this amethyst and i've had it ever since yeah it's awesome I'm glad. I'm glad that we started talking because I, I love watching you grow and watching what you do and it's been an absolute pleasure. You're just such a treat. So one thing I have to say, this morning has been crazy. I don't know if it's like the fact that like there's about to be a full moon, the energy has just been crazy. But this morning, me and my mom, we were sitting at the kitchen table and I heard, we both heard this, it was like a meow, like a really loud meow, but it wasn't like a cat. And we went into the living room and both of my cats were sleeping. And we were like, you heard that, right? Like, I'm not crazy. And it was coming from like right in between us. So we were like, what's going on? And then, and then like, we just kind of like brush it off because like those things always happen and we're like, yeah we're probably just crazy and then <laughs> and then a couple hours later um I was in I was just sitting in my room and I have this well it fell off of the thing but I have this cross necklace and it was sitting right here on my desk and I set my phone down next to it and I turned around and the cross necklace flew off of the desk and I just turned around because I heard it fall like I heard the clinking and I turned around and I just stared at it and I was like um, hi, I don't think we should be throwing cross necklaces around. Yeah, <laughs> and then, no thank you. And then like, it, I just got like a chill and I was like, I'm gonna go take a shower. And then about an hour ago, I'd say, me and my mom were standing in the kitchen again. And between us, it sounded, it wasn't like, it wasn't a meow that we heard the first time, but it was like somebody saying, hey. And we looked at each other and we were like, what? And then there, and we were like, what the fuck <laughs> like <laughs> and, and my mom was like I was like you need to get some cots out and start banging them around clear that, that energy out <laughs> and my mom was like do you think it's sissy because I was being really loud and I was like I don't know if it was she's probably trying to tell me to shut the fuck up and I'm being too loud <laughs> and she was like yeah you are well I'm gonna go take a nap now and I'm like okay I'm gonna go eat lunch <laughs> I like your salt lamp thank you Cute. I've never seen him change colors before like that. That's cool. I can't remember who it was, but somebody gave me like twenty dollars to lick it once, and because they wanted to know if it tasted like salt, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll lick it for ten dollars, twenty dollars, I don't know. And I licked it. And I was like, ew, it tastes like dust. And <laughs> and another person that was with me was like, you're an idiot. That thing attracts dust. And I was like, well. <laughs> It is actual salt. It's Himalayan salt, so it will taste like salt. Yeah, well, I learned about the hard way. Pet dust. <laughs> I, I can't even remember where I got that one. I think somebody got it for me as a Christmas present. I've had that for like six, seven years and... Yeah, and my dad's like, what is that even for? And I was like, I'm pretty sure, I don't know exactly what it is. Doesn't it keep like bad spirits away? Like in like a certain culture, that's what they believe. Well, salt is very protective, and so it creates, when you light it up like that, it's actually creating like an energy barrier. So think of it kind of like it's it's putting out like almost like ultrasonic waves, and 
So sometimes when you're around it, or even like when you go into the stores, like the the crystal stores, and they have more than one on, and you're like, <laughs> it kind of like makes you feel caffeinated. <laughs> That's what they do. So they can raise energy, but they can also push out energy that that is lower vibrational. Because um, at night, I always have like I don't know if you can tell my mirror, but I have LED. I have a light uh -huh. strip up above my bed, but I also yeah. I also turn that on, and it just mm -hmm. feels like peaceful. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> but then too, if you're having trouble sleeping, try turning it off because it might be too, a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> Who sleeps at night anyway? I don't. Yeah, who does that? That's overrated. <laughs> That's editing. That is precious editing time. <laughs> right. I hear you on that one. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask you this question again. Do you believe in the paranormal? 100%. <laughs> I, I um, filmed a video with one of my friends the other day, and that was that's the first question I asked her, and she was like, well, duh. Like, <laughs> like what kind of question is that? And I was, I, I'm just waiting for one person to come on here and just say, no. And then the video's over, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess I, can't, I, guess I can't talk to you then. <laughs> Not at all. I don't believe in it at all. Um, you know, it, it is funny though because I don't I don't think I did at first. Like I knew that there were things, but I couldn't explain them and then I thought it was just me. That's because what I that's thought too. I was, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I was raised, you know. We we were raised religious, but it was like we didn't talk about that stuff. It was the devil's work. Yeah. So we didn't talk about it, so I'm like Okay, <laughs> I would talk about it. <laughs> That's bad. So I wasn't quite sure, and then I was like, "Well, is it real? Is it not real? Is it in my mind? Am I crazy? Because I have like crazy family members, like legit schizophrenic family members." And I thought, "Oh my God, it's me." <laughs> <I'm> crazy. <laughs> so it was kind of a weird thing, but yeah, I mean, the more I I sat with it, the more I realized, yeah, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> It's gotta be. I love it when skeptics like, um, they go to a haunted place or they just, um, they just, something happens to them that they cannot explain and they're, they're like thinking in their head, they're like, it could be this, it could be this, but it can't be that. It just logically can't be that. Yeah. And then like they start spiraling and they're like, oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we're trained to think that way. Mm -hmm. We're trained to be analytical thinkers. We're trained to be, you know, based on science and science is great and it can prove a lot of things, but it, spirituality and the paranormal are based on feelings mm -hmm. and we don't operate that way. Yeah. We are not taught to operate on feelings. Feelings, what is that? Step it back down. <laughs> we don't go there. <laughs> so it's it's having to retrain your brain to bring in that awareness of feeling and experience over rational explanation. And it does change things a lot. And I think that's really hard for people who are natural analytical thinkers because they're like, where's the data? I need to see it because if it's not put in data points, I don't believe it. It doesn't make sense to me. So it is, it is a, a balance there for sure. My husband's very analytical. So that's how Tyler that. is. And then I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> like something will happen and I'll be like, Oh my God, it's a ghost. And he'll be like, no, it's not. It's just an air draft. It's, it's just the creaking from the floors. It's, it's fine. I'm like, no, it is a ghost. I know, well, I, I woke up to like a door closing in what it sounded like my bathroom and it, it woke me up because it was loud and I was like the fuck was that <laughs> and my husband's like it wasn't a bath there was no doors closed it's fine it's just you I'm like no that woke me up it's like no it's a dream I'm like no that was a door I heard it <laughs> I don't sleep no one here, but I wasn't about to get up and investigate either. <laughs> yeah, like I'd be like, I'm just gonna roll over and like close my eyes and act like that didn't happen and I'll think about it more when I'm awake. Yeah, right? I'm like, mm, now's not the time. <laughs> <laughs> like it's over the head, lights on, nope. <laughs> what is the scariest experience you've ever had? I'm so glad that you asked me this because last time I don't think I had an answer. But I do now. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, um, 
I have, I co-host a podcast and we recently did, I know you know that. Yeah. But, uh, we, we recently did um, The Black Dahlia and I will tell you that I was not expecting um, Elizabeth's energy to be what it was. I was expecting her to be like this quiet kind of demure girl like they portray her, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but she was something else, man. She was heavy and freaky and she showed up to my partner, um, in her dreams with her mouth, like cut open and just like totally aggressive and well, not aggressive, but she's just like overwhelming. Oh, that's a good word for her. She is overwhelming. And I feel like, um, she likes the shock and awe of things. And so the more that she can do that, the more memorable she is to you but she when I was editing she was just like right here she was just hanging out and she was just like gross energy and she just wanted to be like in everything and I literally had to tell her to go sit in the chair and wait for me because I I didn't want to talk to her right now because it was just like it was so gross but she um she just was she was really overwhelming and and a little too much <laughs> it wasn't necessarily that it was scary but it was just a lot of heavy energy and it was it was like the minute we talked about her she she wouldn't leave she wouldn't go away and so for us both it was like a matter of getting her gone mm -hmm. and she just refused to go and I've never had that happen before well I had it happen once but not like that and I was just like God, I don't ever want to experience that again, but I feel like it would have been worse had I not had regular procedures, procedures and practices yeah. um, as far as protection methods gone, but she was something else, man, and, and it was like anytime I would ask her something, like she would show me just the nastiest and the weirdest things just to get a reaction out of me, and I'm like, no we're not doing that if you want to be here and you want to talk to me that's great but you can't behave like that like she's just she was weird like that it was just really bizarre and that one will forever stay with me because it was just so out there I wasn't expecting it but I don't ever want to experience that again like we won't even say her name because she's <laughs> just like <me. laughs> that that sounds like a lot like like the stories yeah. like that make me glad that I'm not like 100% open. Like I, I experience things, but I've never had anything like super terrifying like that. Like I'll see shadows and hear things and stuff, yeah. but I've never had an experience like that. And that just sounds yeah. so, so I've had creepy. one other, when I first started, I had, I was attracting a lot of, of spirits who, had taken their own lives and so it was really heavy and it was really overwhelming and so straight away I kind of had to set up what I call well it's boundaries but I call like a tether system and so I'll, I'll create like an energetic circle and they have to stay on the outside of that circle they can't come in into my space like they can stay there and they can connect to me but in a safe way if that makes sense mm -hmm. but with her she was like like a, like a little kid, you know, she kind of tried to step in and come a little closer. And so she was really pushing the boundaries that I had set and it was making me mad. And I think it made her more excited. And so her energy grew because she was like feeding off that irritate. It was just the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. I was like, mm -mm. we're going to have to burn the house down. If you don't go. <laughs> like, I can't have you here. It was really weird and not one of my favorites for sure because it just left me feeling icky. Your, your, what your energy puts out is what you get back. Sometimes, yeah, um, absolutely. So I have been told like I'm such a healing person. I like, I put out like a healing energy and I attract broken people and they, and th this has happened like my entire life. Like every boyfriend, every friend, like they have come to me wanting like feeling like I, like I can heal them and then it drains me but I was wondering if that's the same thing in the spirit world like do I do I bring in broken energies like wanting to be near me because I put out such a healing energy yeah that's your empathic nature 
And so, you know, everybody has this ability to be able to open themselves up and communicate with spirit. Everybody does. It's not, you know, singled out for special people. But there are those who naturally radiate in a higher energy vibration, which spirit recognizes straight away because they don't have to come down to meet you very far. And so it's like a light on. It's like an open sign to them. They're like, oh, she sees me. She knows we're here. And so they tend to kind of gravitate towards that. And so, uh, you know, your personality is naturally like that. You want to help people. You like people. You want to help them. And so they know that. But spirit can be overwhelming. If they were overwhelming in life, they're overwhelming in death too. They're just that way. That's that's who they are. That's who we are. Our personalities don't change. We came from the factory that way. So it just rolls over. So if you've got a spirit like like her or you know the few that I've dealt with that are just like energy suckers, like they want you to, to be you know, in their space or they want to be in your space and they require a lot of attention. They were like that in life too. So it's not a surprise if you are naturally attracting people like that, that you would do that with spirit as well. And so that's why it's important to not be open 24 hours a day. Yeah. That is one thing you taught me. (laughs) Yeah. You're like, Oh, you're open. Okay, cool. And so you really have to make sure that you put, you know, office hours out there. Yeah, this last week has been like mental breakdown day after day. I I dyed my hair. I don't know if you can tell. You can. It's darker. I was going to mention it. But, um... (laughs) I, I looked at Tyler yesterday and I said like after like the last week I've had like since Monday I've just been crying multiple times a day just the energy has been so heavy and I looked at him and I said if one more minor inconvenience happens today I have to dye my hair I, I have to please the mental breakdown gods and he was like okay and then I wanted to watch the cardinal game and it and it was supposed to be on ESPN and it wasn't <laughs> So I looked at Tyler and I was like, we're going to go dye my hair. Let's go. (laughs) And he was like, okay. Well, you didn't miss much. They lost terribly, but they made it up last night. So Mm -hmm. I I was listening to it while we were dyeing my hair and I was like getting into it. And I was like, I don't want to, I was like getting dye all over my phone and the floor. And I was like, I got to stop doing this. (laughs) Funny. Yeah, but that's it. I mean, it's just it's just your natural way of being and it, it's like, you know, you'll find people just talking to you about their personal life in the store. They'll just start talking to you, you know, and then and, and they'll even mention, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and you're like, that nah, happens all the time. Is there an experience that ever changed your view? Like I guess like one of your first ever experiences? Mm, yeah. So one of my first ever experiences, um, well, I had two, two that really stood out to me that was like, oh yeah, this is happening. So we were, my first one, we were moving from um, Washington State to Arizona and we had been, we had already moved around a lot and I was like an angsty teenager and I didn't want to move and I was already pissed off and mad and I just didn't, it wasn't on my list of things to do. And so here we are, driving for three days um, (laughs) to Arizona in a short amount of time. We had moved in like a six month period twice. And I was like, oh fuck this, this is awful. So I was mad. So we left Washington and we made a stop in Oregon uh, for breakfast. And I wasn't feeling very good. So I was in the bathroom and I was kind of just trying to like clean myself up and feel human, you know? And the door pushed and in the bathroom it was just a sink and a stall and so I'm standing next to the door the door kind of pushed open I was like what the fuck and I didn't think anything of it and I just kept doing what I was doing and then I saw it do it again I'm like what the hell so I opened the door and there's this little tiny old lady she's like hi and I was like oh hi I have a soft spot for old people and I was like well come on in and she's like oh thanks I don't get out much no worries no worries walks behind me and she was having a problem with the stall door 
So I'm like, oh, I'll get that for you. And she's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And she's in there, and I'm get, getting ready to go, and I gather up all my things, and I go to put my hand on the door, and like clear as day, she just goes, goodbye, Tara. And I was like, and I just kind of stood there for a minute, and I was like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I like made a beeline to our table, which just kind of happened to be sitting in eyesight to the bathroom. And I guess the color was kind of out of my face because I was in shock, you know, like, how did this woman know my name? Mom's like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you'll never believe it just happened. Um, some lady in the bathroom just said my name. And she's like, what? So I told her what happened. And she's like, I go, you might want to go check on her because she might be stuck. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to go. There was nobody in there. Like, when we could literally see the door, there was nobody there. So my mom was like, well, maybe it was, maybe it was your guardian angel, you know? And, the, and I was like, you know, maybe because of what I had felt like I was stewing on this and now at this point we had our breakfast and we've gone we've gotten back into the truck and we're moving and I'm thinking about it you know and and what came through was you know even though you feel really alone right now you're not we see you we're with you we're here and then uh one other time was my sister and I shared a room and I woke up to the sound and it sounded like, you know, when you turn the fan on and you turn it up really fast, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's making that weird noise and you could feel the air. I woke up to that because I could hear the noise and she slept in the bed next to me and I was facing her. And what I saw was all of these like black kind of massy looking things that were coming out of like the bathroom and all these dark areas of our room and like swirling around her and going under the bed and over the bed and it was making that noise because they were moving so fast and it scared me and I called for my mom and during that like whole interaction she actually sat up and started like <gasps> she like couldn't breathe and they ended up having to take her to the hospital because she was having what was like an, um, like an asthma attack or something she didn't have asthma she didn't have any of that but it was just weird to see it and hear it. And I tried to tell my mom about it. My dad heard me, he's like, don't talk like that. <laughs> that you were just imagining things. I'm like, yeah, I was imagining that. <laughs> like she literally so went to the so, hospital. Yeah, so much so that you had to take her to the hospital. But I, it was, it was those kinds of things that were like, yeah, there is another side. <laughs> it's not just us here, it is, it is a, a mix of spirit and, you know, us having an existence together. So, so did you ever like, thing, like a long winded answer to your question <laughs> um, with the black masses? Did you ever, um, um, like, did you have any theories on what it could have been or like who, what, or just, you can't even explain it. I couldn't even explain it, but you know, having that religious kind of, concept in my mind I'm like well this is a, a spiritual path and so that's kind of always where my mind went so I'm like why my dad was weird and he brought things home like that and so it was for us a spiritual battle you know my mom and I were like the good side <laughs> and my dad was all heavy baggage and gross shit so I'm like that's him he brings that stuff out so it was always like an attack on mm -hmm. stuff so I was like that's where my mind went but I don't know I don't know what it was and or what they were I just know that they were destructive that's for sure so <laughs> yeah that, th those are never fun to deal with <laughs> <laughs> no I don't know what they were but but they did cause problems for sure so let's get into the Akashic Records yeah. I can finally say it right now without butchering it completely. <laughs> no, you're okay. So what exactly are they? Perfect question. So the Akashic Records or Akasha is Sanskrit for the energetic substance from which all life is formed. So the Akashic Records are an actual extension of divine source, if you believe that. So they are basically the overseers. They record every thought, every word, every emotion and action um, that's created by us, by our independent souls. Um, 
to that, we also, you know, that extends out to um, your businesses, your homes, plants, animals, everything has a record because it's created, whether it's by us or a natural, in a natural way. Um, so there's a record for that. And each individual thing has their own record keepers. So when we access the records, we're actually connecting into that higher consciousness, which connects us to the deepest levels of our soul essence. So that's why they're very particular about, um, you know, how our future looks. They're not future predictors, but they give you all of the possibilities that could be. So they share that with you. Um, and they bring forward a lot of masters, teachers, and loved ones um, to share that knowledge with you too. So you could be talking to anybody <laughs> on that higher realm um, because they're so vast and they're so ancient. They're like before time was even a thing. So they're just so incredibly knowledgeable, but they meet you on your level. So you're not talking to some, to some like ominous being, mm -hmm. oh, but you are, but they sound relevant and relatable and like you and they're funny. And so um, they help you build this relationship of self-understanding and self-empowerment. And they're really, really cool to work with, but they do it with unconditional love and grace and, you know, just a lot of encouragement <laughs> for you. Um, and they give us the tools we need to discover our greatest potentials. So they're pretty cool. I like them. <laughs> How would like a beginner kind of start going about that? Like what's the first step to like getting into that? I would say uh, for the beginner to start working with the Akashic Records is to understand you know what they are and how they operate which is basically what I just explained but to access them the best way to do that there is kind of it's different than working with spirit guides where you can just kind of meditate with them mm -hmm. and you're there with the Akashic Records you have to because they are so high vibrational you have to be able to raise your energy levels up and so it does take some time to kind of work into that energetic space um, if you're new. So you're going to have to practice some kinds of meditation, some, some energy work to kind of raise your vibration up. But once you do, you can, um, there's, I forget who it is, but there's a, there's a sacred prayer. Um, and they say prayer loosely because it is kind of written like a prayer, but that's your access key. And it's written so that it's, it's, they consider it literally a vibrational key to unlock the library so that you can get in there and sit down and start pulling your files um, and accessing that information. But it is quite an energy exchange. And so that's where I would recommend you start yeah. is to try, you know, raising your vibration up by listening to maybe like, um, energy frequency music and things like that that changes that that dynamic a little bit yeah I remember when like you first like started teaching me about meditation and everything it was a it was a ride the first couple <laughs> times it, cause, like it wasn't scary but like it was new and new things are like not scary but like overwhelming like the feeling yeah, yeah. It is, and you know, I'm a really big advocate for meditation, and I know a lot of people balk at it, and I did. And the reason is, is because I have a really active brain, and it is really hard for me to sit there in silence. Yeah, I, I am <laughs> the exact same way. Yeah, so when I, when I, I was told by somebody else, listen, if you have thoughts come in, acknowledge them. Don't try to like, no, <laughs> you know, no, no, I'm not doing that today. Let them come in and come back to your focus point because thoughts are going to happen. Your brain mm -hmm. is constantly going. You're, you're never going to be able to shut that off completely. So you have to learn to work with it. But in doing that, you can separate out what's important and what's not important. And you learn to kind of 
I call it a hallway. So you kind of learn to put yourself in this hallway where you can still kind of hear what's going on on the outside, but you're, you're focused on this hallway for just a little bit of time. So I personally like meditation and you don't have to sit there for hours. You can do it in the shower. You can do it while you're doing dishes. You know, it's just a, a small amount of time to take your, your real thought process out of the way so that you can receive the information you need <laughs> but yeah I, I would definitely start with meditation first just because it, it is it is a perfect way to pull up your energy level and push it out so that you know you're in a protective space but you're also um, receiving divine information that's for your highest good I always found that um so I'm a very active person. I know I don't seem like it because I, I live a very lazy lifestyle, but I love going outside into nature and being on walks and everything. And I found that like when, if I'm sitting here trying to meditate and relax and calm my brain and I can't, I get fidgety. Like my yeah. legs will shake and everything. And so I put headphones in, listen to some music that I like, and I just go for a walk and I could be walking for like two to three hours just getting completely lost in, and up here and like not yeah. acknowledge anything and so that really helped. Yeah, and being out in nature is naturally grounding and what you're doing, whether you realize it or not, is you're actually exchanging energy. So your feet are on the ground and you're pulling up earth energy and releasing it back out. So your energy exchange, so out and in. So you do feel better when you're out in nature because you're pulling in that good energy. So that's what you need. So any way that feels good to you is always a good way to meditate. And it doesn't take much. And then, and then I'm walking around outside barefoot and everybody's like, I've stepped on glass so many times just because I love being barefoot. Like I will yeah. walk around town barefoot. I'd walk into stores barefoot if I had the option. But like, yeah. I'll just go walking around barefoot just because I love like, like you can't like feel the vibration, like an actual vibration, but you can feel it in the ground. Like you can just feel the energy and I love it. Like ever since I was little, I've just been wanting to be barefoot and my feet are like probably permanently stained brown and dirty because of it so do you know what that's called no it's called earthing really i had no idea it was an actual thing <laughs> yes it is and you might actually be able to feel that vibration if you stand there and you close your eyes feel it because you will you will feel it if you do that because like our yard is like there's i love walking in the grass and like feeling like the feeling of the grass and then rocks like rocks don't hurt me i could walk on rocks and be fine and everybody's like how do you do that how, doesn't that hurt i'm like no i've been going barefoot since i was little it doesn't bug me right yeah and then <laughs> and then when i was like 13 or 14 i was over at the playground and i was like running around barefoot and i stepped on glass and like sliced my foot open like that oh, big no. i had to get butterfly stitches and i had a softball tournament the next day so it was Ooh. it was a great time that's so good <laughs> i'm glad my socks were like super padded and so How i couldn't really feel play? it um it was um it was on like the like like right here like i have a scar right there oh. and where and like my softball socks they're padded right there and oh, so i put okay. like and like a yeah and by then it had been about 24 hours since the butterfly stitches had been on and it, it hurt to like walk and run on it but it sure. wasn't like an overbearing pain and right. so okay so, like, and my softball You're coach was my coach was yelling at me like, Abby, quit running around barefoot. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I have heard like from a bunch of different people and sources that there could be aliens on earth, but they are like us and their vibrational frequency is so high up there that we, we don't recognize them as people. They'd be like aliens to us. And, yeah. and so I'm just like, wondering if I've ever encountered that in my life like have I ever like seen something with that big of a vibrational frequency that I'm like you would Whoa. know it 
you would know it. It's like when you're around somebody and they kind of strike you different and you're like, mm, there's something different about that person and I'm not quite sure what it is because I can't put my finger on it, but they're different. And you can kind of gauge whether it's a good thing or if it's off, you know what I mean? So I, if they're that high vibrational, then yeah, you're going to know it. Because, like, we're able to, like, pick up on other people's energies really well. Like, if somebody has, like, a bad energy, you can feel it. Like, I'm at the point, I can't be around people like that anymore. Yeah. Like, it just drains yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is, because you, you naturally kind of gravitate to a higher vibration anyways. And so when people of that lower energy come in, you're like, ew. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, it, it, it's interesting because your body naturally tells you that something's not right. So that's kind of how that plays into your intuition too. So when you're, when you're like, oh, I don't know why I know that, or I don't know why I feel that way. You need to listen to that because that's something that will save your life. <laughs> it could, but it's also just a really it's a really good way to get into your natural rhythm of feeling those energetic vibrations too. Uh, aliens on Earth? I don't know why they would want to be here. <laughs> oh God, no. Quite honest with you. You know what? I saw a funny thing and it was like talking about e Elon Musk trying to build rockets so he could get home. <laughs> and I was like, I think there might be something to that. My oh, my God. my thing about that is um. Like, you know how NASA used to explore the oceans? Yeah. Like, what the hell is down there that now they want to get off the planet? Like, what? Did you see that? I saw that one too. I was like, oh, did you post that? No. But oh, I, I was I just thinking about like it. Because, like, only five per three or five percent of the ocean has been explored. What is down there? What is there that Have we seen don't some know about? Creatures in the dark? It is terrifying. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and like I'm not scared of the ocean or anything but like the, just seeing those things not knowing what's out there just terrifies me yeah. like well space ugh. is trying to kill you too well Don't true by the pretty flashing stars <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to kill you in both areas yeah I no. saw um <laughs> a theory a couple days ago I can't remember who I saw it from but there's a theory that um the aliens um, their, their spaceships can, um, travel underwater, and so sometimes they'll come to Earth, and, like, when we see these UFOs, and they'll go and land in the, in the ocean, and then they can come back up and go into space, and that's, that's why like they're- That's the world shit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that scares me so bad. Have you seen War of the Worlds? No. <gasps> You should totally watch that. <laughs> but you just said it's, it's scary. So, it's so good, but it is so scary. Like they, they came here at one point and they're under, well, I don't want to give too much weight, but they're under the ground. And so now they're having like lightning storms that are unexplainable, but they're like the aliens getting shot down into the ground to get into their little spacecrafts. And they're trying to like take over earth, but it freaks me out that is so bad. So, so I'm creepy. like, See, this is why I hate you. I ugh. don't do alien things. And and then there's like so many theories about like like Walmart having underground tunnels and Walmart. and everything. <laughs> yeah, I saw that a while ago. Like what? Like um, massive chain stores. They'll have like underground tunnels to do like fucking Illuminati shit. I don't I don't know, but apparently people like will go missing. Like, like, what? like at Disney World, how people like will just go missing, and there's so many underground tunnels. There's theories Wait, that like people will people go missing at Disney World. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, like kids will go missing and then show up in a random part of the park, and I'm like, I don't want what. <laughs> what? I never heard that. Yeah, That's I kind of weird. Like I did a, a couple years ago when I was first starting like this channel. We did a video about like disappearances around the world and so many people go missing in like walmarts um amusement parks like all these places and there's like underground tunnel systems and like now that's why the sex trafficking is so bad now like um people would just go missing and then end up on like the other side of the country and weird and it scares me i'm like i don't want to yeah. go to walmart alone yeah 
I don't know if I want to, like, that would be my, like, my last known place. <laughs> the last thing out of Walmart going for toilet paper. <laughs> they haven't seen her since. And then, like, five years later, she turns up in a Walmart across the country. <laughs> disoriented and confused. How did I get here? Who am I? <laughs> what are your top three locations that you would like to visit? Haunted locations? <gasps> okay, this is a good question. <laughs> I want to visit, and I'm gonna totally butcher this name because it's Italian, but Proveglia Island. Oh, Proveglia, I wanna, I love that. I saw it on Ghost Adventures. Yeah. I was like, first of all, that's my motherland. <laughs> <laughs> Italy is my homeland. Um, but that place is so interesting and I wanna see it, I wanna feel it. Yeah, just like, wasn't it like the Black Plague victims went there and just got yeah. burned and like their ashes are still there and it's part of the dirt? Like but it's supposed to be like super, super haunted. Like, people oh, yeah. don't want to go there. It's pretty bad. But it looks so pretty. It does. I want to go there. I mean, you have to expect places like that to have a lot of oh, yeah. energy. For sure. But um, there's that one. And... Maybe some cool castles, maybe in Scotland, because also Scotland. Oh, yeah. And let's see. Oh, no. There's some pretty cool, I think any kind of, like, abandoned hospital is always oh, weird yeah. to tell you. Working hospitals are scary as fuck, mm -hmm. and then the abandoned ones are even worse. So anything like that, but Proveglia Island for sure. Speaking, for sure. speaking of, like, haunted hospitals, this... This has like lived in like the back of my head for so long that I I like for a while I felt like I was just being crazy and it didn't actually happen. I was um so my grandma was in the hospital like I don't even know how many years ago like five or six years ago and she w she started recovering and she got transferred to like this apostolic Christian center like it's kind of like a nursing home slash hospital. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, um, it, like, there was medical staff there, but there was also, like, nursing home workers there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it, I get, it's, like, transitioning from, like, being in a hospital to going back home since she was in a hospital for, like, a month or two. And I just had, like, the weirdest feeling in there. I don't know if it was, like, the fact that it was, like, an apostolic place or, like, I don't know, because it had the feel of a nursing home, but, like, there were nuns in there and stuff. And me and my dad would go in there like every other day in the morning and then like the rest of his siblings would have like afternoon duty night duty and like so she was never alone in there sure and we i just had off vibes about the place one day i was like just kind of roaming around because i was like checking the place out and i was like coming back into my grandma's like the hallway and her room was on the left and i saw like I can't remember if it was a nun or like a hospital worker. I don't know, but she was like rushing at me. And so I dipped into my grandma's room real fast. And I just kind of like stood there because her door was open. And I just kind of yeah. like stood there for a minute, like waiting for her to pass. And she never did. And I didn't hear a door open or close. And she was like just a few feet away from me. And so there was no other door for her to like go into. And I, I peeked my head back out and I looked the way that she was walking and I was like, she didn't pass the door. And I was like, what the, like, was that a ghost or what? <laughs> and I was like, there's no way. And so that's always just been like a what the fuck moment. Yeah, and that like, would worry me out too. And it like never like clicked in my brain that it was like paranormal because I was like, there's, there's like no way that it could have been but now that like I've been thinking about it for like the last five years I'm like that there's like a good possibility that that was something paranormal yeah probably why would she be rushing at you I don't know like maybe like right? maybe there was like an emergency like somebody had died and they needed to mm -hmm. like run down the hallway to get to the patient or whatever and yeah maybe I was just seeing it and I because I was like so confused looking around I was like did you just did you see that? And everybody was like, no, you're crazy. <laughs> Nobody else saw it. 
there is a good possibility. <laughs> you know, places like that used to um, freak me out. When we lived in California, we, um, we would go tour the missions. And those places always gave me the fucking creeps. The fucking creeps. I, there was a couple of times that I would have to go sit outside because it was so weirdly overwhelming. I was like, I don't like this place. I, I think that like abandoned churches are just so spooky because like because I know that like a lot of there is one church around here like a couple hours away from here it's abandoned my friend actually went there to he's a photographer and he was taking pictures of it and it's like this massive church with like a banquet hall and everything attached and he found um signs of satanic rituals being done in a in an abandoned Hello. church and I looked it up and that's like so common for like, for them to like go in there and do like their little rituals. And I'm like, 